Hello students, today we are going to see JE Mean 2025 question from most important chapter current electricity January atom. So most of the questions are from combination of resistance. So we are going to see all the question in detail. So don't skip the video and also we have a page in Instagram and WhatsApp channel. Do join in the channel to explore more regarding physics. Link are in the description and also to watch more video like this don't forget to subscribe our channel. Now let us see the questions. We will see the first question. A wire of resistance 9 ohm is bent to form an equilateral triangle. Then the equal resistance across any two vertices will be. So let us consider you have wire of resistance 9 ohm. It is bent in the form of an equilateral triangle. This represents the sides are equal. So now this wire has been bent to an equilateral triangle. So the sides are equal. That means the resistance will be divided equally. So the 9 ohm is divided into 3 parts which is 3 ohm and 3 ohm and again 3 ohm. So they are asking equivalent resistance across any two vertices. So here I am going to choose these two vertices. I want to find the effective resistance. So now we can see these two 3 ohm are connected in series. First we will resolve that one. So Rs is equal to R1 plus R2. So that is equal to 3 plus 3 that is equal to 6 ohm. Okay. So now these two resistance are combined and they became 6 ohm. Now we will redraw the diagram. So this is 6 ohm and down to that you have a 3 ohm and you here you have a junction. So now these two resistance are connected in parallel. So to resolve parallel 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. And now we will substitute the value. So 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3. Okay so now we are going to multiply and divide by 2. So this will become 1 plus 2 by 6 that is 3 by 6 that is equal to 1 by 2. This is equal to 1 by Rp. So we are going to take a reciprocal. So Rp is equal to 2 ohm. So 2 ohm is the right answer. The equivalent resistance will be 2 ohm. See the second question. Find the equivalent resistance between two ends of a following circuit. First of all we have to name the junction. Let us consider it has potential A. And you can see across these two junctions, there is a blank wire connected across that. This shows this also has the same potential. So we can name it as B. And this junction, we can name it as B. And across these two junctions also, there is a blank wire connected across this. So let us name this junction also B. Now with respect to the junction, we have to redraw the diagram. Let us consider this is A and B. We are going to redraw it. First one, across A and B, you have R by 3 ohm resistance. So first resistance R by 3 ohm and second one across B to A again you have R by 3. So across B to A you have R by 3 and again last one across again A to B you have R by 3. Again you have R by 3. Now you can see all the three resistance are connected in parallel and they are identical. So to find the effective resistance you can use the formula 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. That formula you can use or else all the three are identical. Instead of the general formula, I am going to use another formula. Rp is equal to R by N. Since they are identical, I can use this formula. R represents resistance value that is R by 3 where N represents number of resistance. Totally you have 3 resistance. You can substitute as 3. So R by 9. So the effective resistance is R by 9. We can check the option. Option 3 is the right answer. Next question, find current in the circuit, jockey is at the middle point of 1 ohm. So if the jockey is in the midpoint of 1 ohm means it will divide it into 2 parts that is 1 ohm will divide it into 2 parts that is 1 by 2 ohm and 1 by 2 ohm. With respect to this we will redraw the diagram. So first you have a 0 0.9 volt battery, it is connected to the resistance of 1 ohm that we can divide it into 2 parts which is 1 by 2 ohm again 1 by 2 ohm. And separately again you have 2 ohm resistance. That 2 ohm resistance is connected at the midpoint. Okay. So this is 2 ohm. Now we will resolve the equation. You can, now you can see here 1 by 2 ohm and 2 ohm they are connected in parallel. And this combination is connected to series. So to find the effective resistance we can use the formula 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1. In the place of R1 you can substitute 2 plus 1 by R2 in the place of R2 you can substitute 1 by 2. So this is 1. And 2 will go to the numerator. If you cross multiply that is 2 2 is a 4. 4 plus 1 5. 5 by 2 that is the answer. Anyway we have to find Rp. So we are going to reciprocal. So Rp is equal to 2 by 5. So 2 by 5 you can write it as 0 0.5 ohm. Okay. 
So these two resistance are combined and you got the answer as 0 0.4 ohm and this 0 0.4 ohm is connected to series with 1 by 2 ohm. Again if you can redraw the diagram. So you have a battery which has 0 0.9 volt. These two resistance are combined and you got the value as 0 0.4 ohm and again you have can write the resistance as 1 by 2 ohm or you can write it as 0 0.5 ohm and now they are connected in series. So we can resolve the equation. So R is equal to R1 plus R2. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5 that has become 0 0.9 ohm. So the effective resistance is 0 0.9 ohm. We have to find the current. So that we can take ohm star. V is equal to IR. So I is equal to V by R. In the place of V, we have 0 0.9 ohm. The place of R, again you have 0 0.9 ohm. So it will become 1 ampere. So the answer is 1 ampere. Option 3 is the right answer. Next one is a direct question. Which of the following represent correct relation between resistivity of a conductor and temperature? So the relation between resistivity and temperature. Resistivity at a particular time T is equal to rho naught into 1 plus alpha del T. So this shows if you increasing temperature the resistivity will increase. So option 2 and 4 both are not possible. But it's not linear. If it's not linear means the possible graph is option 1. So option 1 is the right answer. We'll see the next question. In the given circuit, find I if potential at A and B are equal. So you can see the diagram. It's in the form of a Wheatstone bridge. And also they have given at junction A and B, they have same potential. So there is no potential difference. If there is no potential difference, no current will flow through that. So across 50 ohm, there will be no current passing through it. And you can see that it's in the form of a Wheatstone bridge. Using that, we can find the value of R. The formula P by Q is equal to R by S. So we can substitute the formula. In the place of P, you have 10. In the place of Q, you have R. That is equal to, on the other side, in the place of R, you have 20. And in the place of S, you have 40. So this will become 1 by 2. So if you cross multiply, you will get the value R as 20 ohm. Okay. So now we got the value of resistance R that is equal to 20 ohm and with respect to that we can find the value of current I. Okay. So here in this diagram no current will flow through A to B so that the original current which passes through 10 ohm will pass directly through the 20 ohm. So this shows these two resistance are connected in series. Again these 20 ohm and 40 ohm connected in series. So we will resolve the equation. So formula Rs is equal to R1 plus R2. So Rs1 first branch that is equal to 10 ohm and 20 ohm. So 10 plus 20 that will become 30 ohm. This is first one. And for second one Rs2 that is equal to 20 ohm plus 40 ohm that is equal to 60 ohm. Okay. Now these two parts are connected in parallel. So we can redraw the diagram. So first they have 30 ohm and next they have 60 ohm which are connected in parallel and down to that they have a battery which has 40 volt. Okay. Now we will resolve the parallel combination. So 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 in the place of R1 it's 30. 1 by R2 is 60. Okay. So again we are going to multiply and divide by 2. So this will become 3 by 60 that is equal to 1 by 20. So if you are taking reciprocal Rp is equal to 20 ohm. So we got the effective resistance. So using ohms now we can find the current. We know V is equal to IR. So we can write I is equal to V by R. In the place of V we can substitute 40 and resistor R is 20. So if you cancel 0, 0 will get cancelled. Balance 2 ampere. So the current is 2 ampere. Option 2 is the right answer. So next one this question has the same pattern of the first question. So we'll see the question, a wire of resistance R is bent into an equilateral triangle and identical wire is bent into a square. The ratio of resistance between two ends of point of an edge of a triangle to the square. So first they have taken the wire of resistance R, they bend into the form of an equilateral triangle. So equilateral triangle means all the sides will be same. So resistance will divide equally. So we'll draw the equilateral triangle. So it has three equal sides. So the resistance will divide equally. So this will become R by 3, R by 3, again R by 3. Now we have to find the effective resistance across 
any two edges. So, I am going to choose these two edges. The same pattern we have seen in the first question also. Okay. Now, you can see these two resistance are connected in series. So, formula Rs is equal to R1 plus R2. So, this is R by 3 plus R by 3. So, this will become 2 R by 3. Okay. So, using this, we will redraw the diagram. So, these two resistance have been combined and you got the value as 2 R by 3. And down to that, again, you have resistance R by 3. Now, these two resistance are connected in parallel. So, 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by, in the place of R1, we can substitute 2 R. 3 will go to the numerator. Again, 1 plus R. Again, 3 will go to the numerator. Okay. So, in denominator, you need 2 R. So, I am going to multiply and divide by 2. So, this will become 3 plus 6. That will become 9 by 2 R. Okay. So, if you are taking reciprocal R for the first part, that is equal to 2 R by 9. Okay. So, for the equilateral triangle, you got the resistance R1 is equal to 2 R by 9. So, this is the first condition. So, the same wire now it is bent in the form of a square. So, for that we have to find the effective resistance. Is it okay? So, we will draw in the form of a square. Okay. So, all the sides are equal. So, now totally you have 4 sides. So, resistance will divide into 4 parts. So, you can write it as R by 4, R by 4. And again R by 4 and R by 4. You have to connect the wire across any two edges. So, I am going to connect at these two edges. Now, we can see all these three resistance are connected in series. Again, that combination connected to parallel. So, series means formula Rs is equal to in the place of R1, R by 4 plus R by 4 plus R by 4. So, that will become 3 R by 4. Okay. So, again, now we will redraw the diagram. All these three combination connected in series, they got the answer as 3 R by 4. And down to that, again, you have a resistance which is R by 4. And now these two resistance are connected in parallel. So, formula 1 by Rp is equal to in the place of R1, 1 by R1, 3 R, the 4 will go to the numerator. Again, 1 by R2, R, 4 will go to the numerator. Now, I am going to multiply and divide by 3. So, 4 3s are 12, 12 plus 4 16. So, 16 by 3 R. Okay. So, if you are taking reciprocal R for the second part, R2 is equal to 3 R by 16. Okay. So, so, for the square, we got the value R2 is equal to 3 R by 16. So, this is the second one. They ask the ratio for the equilateral triangle resistance and square resistance. So, I am going to divide this both. R, R will get cancelled. Balance, you have 2 by 9 into 16 by 3. So, answer will be 16 into 2 that is 32 by 27. So, the answer is option 4. Option 4 is the right answer. Next, we will see the theory question statement 1. The equivalent EMF of two non-identical battery connected in parallel is smaller than either of two EMF. It is an incorrect statement. To explain this, we will take an example of two non-identical batteries. For example, I will take 2 volt and 4 volt. If I am taking equivalent EMF means the resultant value will be between 2 volt and 4 volt. Either it will be 3 volt or 3.5, 2.5 depend upon its internal resistance. But anyway, it will be between these two value. Like it's like an average value. Okay. So here they have given it as a smaller value. That means it's an incorrect statement. Okay. So first statement is incorrect. Coming to the second statement, the equivalent internal resistance of two non-identical battery connected in parallel smaller than the internal resistance of either of two batteries. It's a correct statement. Whenever the resistance are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance will reduce. So, it's a correct statement. So, statement 1 is incorrect, that is false. Statement 2 is true. Okay, so option 4 is the right answer. Next one is the most important question. The net current flowing through in the given circuit is. So, for the circuit, we have to find the effective resistance. Using Ohm's law, we have to find the current. Before that, you can see the circuit. In the circuit, you have a capacitor. In a steady state, the current will not flow through the capacitor. So, in this branch, the current will not flow. So, if in this branch, the current doesn't flow means in this branches also, the current will not flow. So, you can neglect these branches. So, neglecting this resistance, we can redraw the diagram. Then, we can find the effective resistance. Okay. So, now you have a battery of 2 volt. And upper part, you have a 2 ohm resistance. Okay, and as a diagonal, you have 
4 ohm resistance and again you have a 3 ohm resistance and parallel to 3 ohm you have 6 ohm resistance that's all. All other branches will be neglected. Is it okay? Now we can see this 3 ohm and 6 ohm connected in parallel. So we'll resolve the equation. So 1 by RT is equal to 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6. So again you can multiply and divide by 2 or you can cross multiply. You can do whatever it is. You will get it as 3 by 6 that is equal to 1 by 2. So if you are taking reciprocal RP will become 2. Okay. So now you can see these two resistances are combined and you want it as 2 ohm. Okay. Again if you want you can redraw the diagram. So you have 2 ohm battery. Here you have 2 ohm resistance and along the diagonal we have 4 ohm resistance. These two resistances are combined and we got it as 2 ohm. And now you can see these 2 and 2 ohm are connected in series. So series formula Rs is equal to 2 plus 2 that will become 4 ohm. Okay. And now these two resistances are combined and you got it as 4 ohm resistance. Again 4 ohm, 4 ohm are again connected in parallel. So again we will take the resistance formula 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 in the place of R1 you have 4. Again R2 also 4, you will get it as 2 by 4 that is equal to 1 by 2. So if you are taking reciprocal Rp is equal to 2 ohm. Okay, so the effective resistance is 2 ohm. Using this we can find current that is V is equal to IR. So I is equal to in the place of V we can substitute to the place of R again to that will become 1 ampere. Okay, so the answer is 1 ampere. We will see the last question. The key shown in the circuit is closed at time t is equal to 0. Choose the incorrect option regarding the condition at time t is equal to 0. You can see the diagram. You have a battery, resistance and capacitor are connected in series and you have a key which is in the open condition. At the time of close, at the instant, we have to find the incorrect option. So, at the time of close, at that instant, the capacitor will act as a wire. That means it will be short circuited. Because of that, no charges will store in the capacitor. Only a minimum amount of charge will store in the capacitor. Because of that potential difference, the capacitor also will be very minimum. The maximum potential difference will go only for the resistance. Is it okay? So, from this, we can choose the option. First option, current in the circuit is zero. That is incorrect. So, maximum current will flow through the circuit. Only in capacitor, the charges will not store that much. Okay. So, first statement is an incorrect statement. Second one is voltage across capacitor is minimum. So, there won't be any charges. The potential difference will be minimum. That is a correct statement. Third one, current in the circuit is maximum. That is also correct. Fourth one, voltage across resistance is maximum. That is also correct. So, they are asking incorrect statement. So, option 1 is the right answer. Okay, students, we came to the end of the session. If you have any doubts or queries regarding this video, Please do command it and to watch more video like this, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you students.